Hey, hey, guys, guys, just a little update. I have ordered AirPods. They're coming here on Tuesday. So you don't have to keep reminding me about the AirPods. I appreciate you looking out for me, but we got them. Now to the point of this video. Due to the request of lots of you out there, here's what I think should be added to the world's best operating system. That's not my opinion. This is just fact. That operating system is iOS. And I think I've said a lot of these things before, but the reason I'm saying them is because they're still not a reality. So yeah, let's just begin. I think the most obvious and noticeable update you could give a platform is a complete OS redesign, which this, in my mind, would be dark mode. This means that anywhere on the screen that there is white and anywhere on the screen that there is black, we reverse those. So now everything is dark with white text, which I think would be a lot easier on the eyes. And with the rumored iPhone 7s, 8, whatever they're going to call it, it's supposedly supporting an OLED display. So you could actually have those pixels off by the time that phone was released, which, hey, maybe that could save battery. I understand right now, if we had dark mode, it would actually be harder on the battery. Here's the thing. I don't care. I would take a dock in battery life if I could get that dark mode on my iPhone 7. I still think that would look great. And as soon as as you saw someone with it, you would know exactly that's on iOS 11 for sure. My next wish is something that I think they should literally just rip off from Android. Don't even care that it's not an original idea. Face chat bubbles. So on Facebook Messenger on Android, whenever you're on the home screen or in another app, you can have a little bubble with the person you're talking to's face on it. And when you tap that bubble, it opens up the conversation and you can just type right in there, send your messages, read what you want, and then close it again. That is very, very handy because I think whenever someone's multitasking on a phone, 95% of the time they're texting someone while doing something else. And yeah, maybe Apple doesn't want third parties to have access to the home screen or uh, overlay access to a third party apps, whatever. Apple just make it a messages feature. That way third parties can't have it. But I use messages for everything. So if just messages had face chat bubbles, mm, that would be good. It would be faster. I think it's a very simple design. I don't think it's too complicated for people to understand. And again, it would be a noticeable, hey, that's an iOS 11 thing. Next is something that could really be done with a simple software update, but it could help iOS 11 be a bit more noticeable. So in the past, I used to edit these tech videos on iMovie on my iPad Pro. Yeah, I was one of those people. Now, I still shot footage on my DSLR that I'm using right now, and occasionally I shot footage in 4K. But whenever I would share footage from iMovie, as in exporting it, but I would lose massive amounts of bitrate on that video because iMovie wants to compress it, it wants to make the file smaller, and the footage just does not look as good. It gets grainy quickly. And with iMovie, there's not some kind of encoding quality. You can't say export at the best quality or medium quality or low quality. It's just, we know what you want, this is what you want, right? And a lot of professionals out there like me are like, no, I kind of want you to not lose any data during that export. And I'm pretty sure when you're recording video on your iPhone, they do this as well. They compress footage. 4K looks great, but if you zoom in, there's a lot of fuzziness. I think it would be great that since we're now sporting 256 gigs on devices, very, very hard to fill that up all the way. If you have that many apps, I applaud you, but that's a ton of apps. Most people who fill that up are going to be taking tons and tons of pictures and video. Let's let those high storage configured phones and iPads have a option in the settings both for iMovie and for the camera app called lossless encoding. That means when you film and export videos, you don't lose any quality. Now, that would take up a lot more space, but on these particular models, you would have the space to fill that up with. That way, some more professionals could actually say the iPad Pro is their main video editing device, and they don't have to compromise with a lower quality product. Next is something I think is an obvious update, Siri. Siri is stupid. And digital assistants are becoming more and more popular with Apple's competition whether it be the Google Assistant, Alexa, Cortana's in there. They're letting Cortana go to third parties, as in they'll put her in smart appliances, maybe a smart speaker eventually. And the Google Assistant, I think, is the best because it understands ongoing context, as in pronouns and conversation. It can get that. And I think Siri could receive a massive update, not just on iOS, but across all of Apple's operating systems. I think it would be the most meaningful if Siri got a major update, because out of all digital assistants, Siri is the most accessible. Siri is on Mac computers. Siri is on iPhones. Siri is on iPad, Siri is on my watch, Siri is on my TV, and you can even access Siri from AirPods. There's not a digital assistant that's that accessible. You know, Google and Cortana and Alexa have their niches, whether it be a smart speaker, a smartphone, on your Windows 10 computer, but only Siri is available across all these different devices. So if we made Siri understand context just as good as the Google Assistant, if not better, I think you'd have the smartest and most used digital assistant out there. Next idea is not my own, but I've seen a lot of people say it out there, and I'm gonna agree with them. Control Center is a missed opportunity with 3D Touch. The one I keep seeing everywhere is 3D touching the Wi-Fi button and seeing the different networks in your area. That would be kind of neat. And I don't know, maybe it's just me, but I think it would be really nice to see a low battery mode in Control Center so that it can easily be toggled. Because some people don't wait till they're at 20% to turn on low battery mode. Some people just know that they have a long day ahead of them and they're not going to be near a charger all day. So even when they're at 100% charge, they'll turn on low battery mode just to stretch it out through the day. And there's quite a few steps to go into the settings and turn it on. So I think it'd be really neat if you could 
could just swipe up and hit bam low battery mode they even have a 3d touch feature with the flashlight that lets you control different amounts of light your flash gives off i don't know if people really use that but apple's obviously okay with using 3d touch features in control center so let's go the extra mile next feature i've said this before and i will say it again i'm gonna say it every year they avoid doing this if in multitasking mode we could swipe up on the home screen and get a close all apps button it would save all of us ocd people time and you know every year apple always says closing all your apps doesn't save battery it actually hurts it and i will always respond i don't care all of these apps use internet in the background and when you have sucky internet like i do that takes down the wi-fi so all of us are left doing this every day trying to close each app to make sure nothing's running in the background i will take a dock and battery it's so simple and it would save so much time the people with jailbreak iphones could do this for years now they should also update the camera app and i think i said this in another video too so that you can change the resolution and frame rates you're shooting at way way quicker whether you just tap it and it switches from 4k to 60 fps to 1080 30 whatever maybe you have to 3d touch it and then choose it's way too many steps you have to go to the settings photos and camera to look at the shooting resolutions and that should really be done inside the camera app you can do that in the android camera apps and it's embarrassing that you can't on ios next i think the activity app should update through your iCloud because when i got my new apple watch i lost all of that activity data that i had on my series one on my last phone because it decides to keep all that activity data native to that device so none of it transferred over to my iphone 7 and there's even goals in the activity app that are like reach your move goal a thousand times it's like but if i'm buying a new watch how am i supposed to ever achieve that goal if i have to have the same watch for three years it's just numbers just pump it up in the icloud right I feel, I feel like this is way too simple. Now that's what I'd like to see in iOS 11. I'm sure there's tons of things you guys would like to see that I didn't talk about. That's fine, I wanna hear them down below. And I'm sure Apple will barely do any of the things I just suggested, but I'm still gonna go fanatic over iOS 11 when it is announced because I'm an Apple sheep and that's what I do. That's that's what my life has sunk into. This is fine, I don't, I don't even mind. This is your Apple sheep here and I will see you in the next one.